Hi everyone, welcome to part one of the Affluent Society. The question to think about here is how did the end of World War II usher in a period of economic prosperity? Even though World War II is over, federal government spending remains very high, and this is the result of the Cold War. In addition to spending on the military, which is still quite high, for example, in 1952, the nation was spending about $44 billion per year on defense, which is about two-thirds of the total budget. But in addition to that military spending, we see high spending on infrastructure. These are the systems within the United States that keep our economy and our society running. So whether it's roads, bridges, airports, seaports, the U.S. is spending a lot of money on these things. One of the key features of the economy after World War II was over was this dramatic increase in consumer demand. Once the war was over, a new affluence had replaced the poverty and hunger of the Great Depression for most Americans, but many still had haunting memories of the 1930s. I mean, if we think about it, these people are bearing scars of living through that period. And so for some of them, there is an obsession with material goods. The idea that if they surrounded themselves with stuff, physical, tangible stuff, then they could keep the horrors of the Great Depression away. The other thing is that Americans after World War II had a lot in savings because during the war, people were making really good money, but there wasn't a lot of stuff to buy because the factories weren't producing consumer goods. They were making guns and tanks and planes and bombs and not cars, refrigerators, stoves, the things that you and I would buy. In addition, in 1949, we have the introduction of the very first credit card, which is, of course, going to lead to an increase in buying on credit. So all of this is to say that there is a pent-up consumer demand. And what we said before is consumer spending drives the economy. And this means the economy of the post-World War II era is very, very strong. Now, we might compare it to the economy of the 1920s, but the biggest difference is going to be that the economy of the 1950s is built on a solid foundation. One of the things that Americans wanted to buy the most was a new home. In 1945, only about 40% of Americans owned a home. But by 1960, 60% of Americans owned a home. Part of the reason why we see this dramatic increase in demand for home ownership had to do with a change in family dynamics. When we take a look at the years prior to World War II, one of the things that we notice is that families tended to be uh, very large living under one roof. And it wasn't necessarily just mom, dad, and the kids. It had to do with grandparents and aunts and uncles and cousins, living these extended families living under one roof. But once World War II is over, we see a shift. We see a desire for young couples to have their own home with just what we call the nuclear family, the mom, the dad, the kids. So because of this, there is a huge increase in demand for houses. But at the same time, there is also a dramatic decrease in available housing. One of the things uh, that we'll notice about this period is that in 98% of American cities, there was a housing shortage because people were moving from the country to the cities. In addition, there was a dramatic increase in people living in what we call the Sun Belt. So from California to Florida, all across there, we see more and more people moving into this area, mostly because the weather is nice, 
certainly nicer than it was in Michigan or Wisconsin or Ohio, but also because air conditioning is going to make this possible. People are not going to live in Phoenix without air conditioning. But the other thing, the final thing, has to do with the growth of jobs in these areas. And this is really when Texas sees its first population boom. So coming back to our question to, to think about, how did the end of World War II usher in a period of economic prosperity? First of all, the government spending on the military and infrastructure remains very high. So think of this as like Keynesian economics, where the government is pumping money into the economy and that's leading to growth. The other thing is there's this natural increase in consumer demand once the war is over. People have money and there are things to buy. So that consumer spending definitely drives the economy. Stay tuned for part two of the Affluent Society.